a nation of debtor slaves. Hmm. My wife and I were having a conversation a little while ago, about a week ago, and we were just talking about what all people owe. A lot of people. Um, we we try to live as debt free as we can, but um, you know the kind of things we used to to do in our past. We know about you know being in debt for different reasons, and and of course people that we deal with, people that we're related to, um, neighbors, and whatever else. And we we said. How many monthly debts do the average person, or does the average person have? And so we kind of started listing things that people would have normally, and this, there's probably other ones that we haven't listed here. But uh, I'm just going to go over these quickly, because it's just staggering when you think of how badly in debt modern man has become. I mean, just, wow. First off, you would have, and this is monthly debts, okay, mortgage or rent depending on if you're paying off a house or just living in some place and paying rent to a landlord. Vehicle payment or payments. People have multiple vehicles and they're making payments on a monthly basis. Cell phone. I grew up not even knowing what a cell phone was back in the 1980s and 1990s and now people can't live without them. It's kind of weird. Health insurance. Again, a lot of people have health insurance. Uh, credit cards and personal loans your monthly payment that you have to pay for those things and whatever else. Life insurance policies, a lot of people have those. Student loans, you go through the university and you come out with a mortgage sides debt that you have to pay off you know, to, to prove how intelligent you were. <laughs> yeah. How about alimony and child support? Okay, or slash child support, I should say. Uh, there's people that go through divorces and they have that to deal with as well. Again, I can't fathom having all these different debts. Social clubs, or also known as a church tithe, depending if you have a country club that you go to or a church building that you go to. You have your annual dues or whatever else. Um, and churches, by the way, the, are not you know, in the New Testament. There's no such thing as a church building in the New Testament. Nobody was told to build a church and go to it. You can look it up in the King James Bible. Uh, and what are church buildings? They're social clubs. It's all that they are. Go to a church building and you'll hear about spaghetti suppers and fellowship and people. Oh, hi, I haven't seen you in a while. It's a social club. That's all that it, that it is. And they charge the tithe, which isn't even in scripture. Um, you won't find a 10% tithe being charged to Christians going to a church building. It's not in there. How about cable TV and internet? Monthly debt, something that you owe every month. Auto insurance and vehicle registration. I know that that might not be a monthly thing, but it would be there as, you know, depending on your auto insurance, if you pay on a monthly basis, if you're having multiple vehicles and with payments, you might have a monthly expense of vehicle insurance. And, you know, auto insurance and vehicle registration, not going to be a monthly thing, but it's, it's still there as a, as a thing. You could probably put that up here with the expenses. But, uh, uh, well, it wouldn't be a monthly expense, but you know what I'm saying. Property tax and income tax. Again, I realize not monthly, but it is something that's there. And some people do, they have it in with their mortgage or whatever, so it does come out monthly. So I did put it in with this. And I have Romans 13, verse 8 down here, because this is the only one that's mentioned in the Bible as being a debt that you would pay. Okay. Um, but look at that list. Twelve things there that modern man has to pay on a monthly basis. I mean, that is staggering. <laughs> I mean, it just, it, it blew my mind when we made this list. And it just, wow, how are people making it? And the simple answer is a lot of them aren't. A lot of people are not making it, especially with the, the lockdown and everything else of this year and in, in every country, basically, they lock things down, except for Sweden, I guess they didn't lock down there. But it's really, really difficult for people to make it. Why? Because they're debtors. They're slaves to the debt system. Well, what about monthly expenses? Okay, we have the debts over here. How about monthly expenses? Things that might not necessarily be a debt that you owe, but you still have to pay for it on a monthly basis. First, you would have groceries and food. So that'd be, I put number 13, because it's adding to the list of your things that you're going to spend a month. Number 14, utilities, meaning electric, heat, water, septic, etc. 
Vehicle maintenance, number 15, vehicle maintenance, as in gas, oil repairs, etc. cetera, uh, if you get around and things like that with a vehicle. Again, you add all 15 of these things up here, those 12 and then these three, 15 expenses for some people? Uh, that's a big problem. And you can get, you can drown very quick in this, in this system here. Uh, if you have some financial problems or you lose your job or whatever else, I mean, it just, like I said, it, when we actually listed it out, it boggles our minds, you know, what a lot of people are, are living under. And I'm going to show you what we do, how we got out of debt and, um, things that we're doing to save money on a continual basis and that might help you. But I'm going to show you some scriptures. We're going to go to the King James Bible now, and I'm going to show you the scriptures that are against debt and that explain the one debt that's okay to have here that's part of life. Romans 13, you can go there first. There is somebody that you should owe money to. And let me clarify here in Romans chapter 13 what's going on. Romans chapter 13 in your King James Bible, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. If a country is wicked, God will let them have a wicked ruler. So don't say, what about Hitler or whatever? God let Germany have Hitler because they were being very wicked as people. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works. See, it defines it here. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. If you live a good life, uh, and you're a law-abiding citizen and whatever else, a ruler will actually praise you. They'll be happy to have you as one of their people that, that you know, I mean, you can't call us a subject here in, in America because, you know, technically we're supposed to be the ones that tell the politicians they're supposed to work for us. They're not royalty like in some other countries. Um, but they're supposed to praise us. A ruler should not be a terror to good works. Verse 4, For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Okay? I should have written Romans 13, verse 6 down here, because that's the verse I was thinking of. Verse 8 is the one I was going to get to, but... Um, verse 6 there, For this calls pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Um, you should pay taxes uh, as a, you know, a debt. Essentially, you are indebted to the government. Why? Because they're providing a service for you. So property tax, income tax is not a bad thing. It's not a thing that you should say, I refuse to do this. Well, they have things that they need to do. They need to repair the roads in your town. They need to, you know, plow the snow in the wintertime if you live up north. Um, and some of that money goes to the law enforcement. Um, it's a nice thing to have law enforcement around to, to you know, go after evildoers and things like that. And I know people can argue it back and forth and whatever else, but the fact of the matter is they're supposed to be government-appointed uh, men there that are supposed to uphold law and order. It's right there. And somebody goes against that and says, well, we should have anarchy or whatever else. Well, then you're not dealing in God's system. You're dealing in a, in a false corrupt system is what you're dealing in. Um, verse 7, Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. All right? Now, verse 8, here's where it condemns the thing of being in financial debt, which I believe is mostly over here, except for number 12. <laughs> Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Okay? Now, it switches gears there. Verse 7, it's talking about, verses 1 through 7, it's talking about government rulers and things like that and people that uphold law and order. 
very plain. Verse 8, it switches and says, owe no man anything. Okay, And I do believe that that's talking about a physical, financial type of a, uh, I owe this person or whatever else. I mean, when you, when you think about it, just, just think about what would happen if there was no such thing as debt. There were no banks. There's no uh, credit and whatever else, and, and people can come along, and if you don't have the money to buy it, you can't, you know, you have to pay for it out of pocket. In other words, there's nobody to lend you the money. Think about what that would do to the cost of housing or the cost of vehicles or the cost of food or the cost of anything. It would drive the price down, majorly down, because if people have to pay out of pocket for it, and there's no credit card to buy the groceries or credit card to make a vehicle payment or, or a vehicle payment, um, it would just obviously mean that it would be a lot cheaper. Uh, I think it would be a lot better system, which we'll talk a little bit more about that here in, you know, towards the end of the study. But I believe that the only thing that's really lawful as far as a debt that you should owe somebody in terms of financially, I do believe in the thing of tax. I think, you know, now there could be unjust taxes. I get that. I understand. But uh, I think tax is something that is supported in Scripture. You're paying tribute there. You say, I don't like the term tax. Okay, then use tribute. All right? Um, that's fine. Now let's look at Proverbs chapter 22. And I realize that people are so in and just buried in debt and whatever else. I mean, if you have multiple things here, I understand it's not going to be a quick process. Uh, I'm not condemning you and saying you're on your way to hell because you have uh, a bunch of debt or something like that. No, I'm trying to help you get out of it, okay, as much as possible, all right, other than the thing of property tax. Let me, let me actually rewrite that because I was thinking verse 8. But I actually meant verse 6. Excuse me. Romans 13 and verse 6. There we go. Okay. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Better slave. Um, the rich ruleth over the poor. Uh, most of these things here are scams that they get people into. Mortgage, it's funny, mortgage actually means death pledge if you've never heard that before, but you get rent, slumlords and things like that, and they'll, they'll have all these, buy these huge, you know, apartment complexes and, and they won't really fix them that nice. I mean, that's all over the world. And they make a lot of money. They make a whole lot of money. Ritual over the poor. Mortgages, the, the artificial inflation of the house prices and whatever else, and which is going to crash before real long, I believe. Um, it's crazy. It, the, the cost of homes, I mean, they'll just bury you in debt for the rest of your life. Uh, it's just terrible. Vehicle payments, I mean, $70,000, $80,000 for a pickup truck? Back in the 1960s, it was, you know, two, $3,000 or something like this. Are the trucks really made that much better? I don't think so. I mean, it's it's just crazy. But people are getting into debt. So, see, back when it was more people buying out of pocket, well, you have to keep the price lower. But now you go to the bank and it's easy credit and no, no credit. Nobody's refused and a lot of times. Uh, maybe not at the bank, but the car dealerships and whatever else. What are they doing? Well, they're trying to, rich, they're trying to be rich people ruling over the poor is what they're doing. Cell phones. Again, who needed a cell phone years ago? I knew uh, when I was a boy, I knew one guy went to the church building I grew up in, and he was a real estate agent, and he had a, a mobile phone in his, in his uh, sport utility vehicle. He had a Chevy S10 Blazer or something, I think. <laughs> now, oh, everybody has to have cell phones. You see little kids walking down the street with their cell phone. Why? You know, the, the concept of private conversation on a telephone is pretty much just gone now. You just walk out in public and just blah, 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 talking to family members, just blabbing all your personal business. Back when I grew up, you got a phone call, you went into the other room, you put your hand over it, and if you see somebody looking in, you say, hey, stop eavesdropping. Now, 
It's, it's a weird world out there. And I'll talk more about some of this, but health insurance. Again, another big money-making scheme. Uh, a lot of times I've, I've known people that they get health insurance and they have some major thing go wrong with them, and the health insurance drops them. They don't even cover everything. I've heard that many times. Credit cards, personal loans. Again, major money being made there by these credit card companies. Life insurance policies. I could say a whole lot on that one too. Student loans. Why does it cost tens of thousands of dollars to go to some school someplace and learn some things? I remember my grandfather um, on my mother's side, my maternal grandfather, and uh, he went to a Bible college back in the, I'd say probably 1920s or so, back in there, and early 1920s, and he said he paid his entire college bill his first Bible college with one gold coin. There you go. Before FDR made gold uh, coins illegal with the whole New Deal thing that he did. But uh, nowadays, I mean, you know, student loans, people are coming out, you know, coming out of medical school, you have a, you know, six figure debt. It's crazy. Alimony child support. Are people getting rich off of that? Sure. There's a lot of women out there that are, that are getting very rich leaving their husbands and, and the poor guy's got all this, he lives in some dingy little apartment and he's got all this alimony payment and everything else he has to pay. And I've known opposite too, where men take advantage of women and the woman's got to pay the alimony payment, which is really odd. But uh, social clubs and church tithe, oh brother, don't get me started there. These mega massive churches that are out there and they got tens of thousands of people going to them, Joel Osteen and everything else. What is it? The ritual of favor of the poor. You got a pastor that's standing up there in the pulpit and he's making six figures a year, maybe more. And you got the people down there that can barely pay their bills and he's up there telling them that they need to pay a 10% tithe to him. It's insane. The rich rule through the poor. Cable TV and internet. Again, <laughs> there's big money being made there. They want you in front of that TV. They want you in front of the internet all the time. Auto insurance and vehicle registration. You know, you can kind of get by with a little bit less money there, but the insurance companies, again, insurance, chapter and verse, please. And property tax, we already talked about that, but just very interesting. The borrower is servant to the lender. You get yourself into debt and all this stuff right here, it's a bad situation. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 24. Isaiah 24. Verses 1 through 12. And boy, this is prophetic right here for America, for the debt situation, the fact that people are debtor, slaves and everything. It's just amazing. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down hmm. and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower. The banks are going to fall. It isn't just people that are in debt over here that are going to fall and fail. The banks are going to fail as well. The, let's say there, the lender, so with the buyer. They're both going to have their world turned upside down in the future. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Again, interest. The Bible word there, usury, is interest. It's what that means. You borrow money, you have to pay back more than what you borrowed. That's usury. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. That's a prophecy for the future. And I believe that America, there will be a lot of people that are going to die because this system right here has made them helpless. They don't know how to survive anymore. I need my mortgaged house. I need my vehicle, you know, my big expensive vehicle. We call them mortgages on, on wheels. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't live without my cell phone. I need my health insurance in case something goes wrong and you go down through here. They feel like they need all this debt. They don't know how to survive anymore. So what's going to happen? 
when this whole system collapses and falls apart, the financial system collapses in the not too distant future, these people are going to die in massive numbers. It's going to be the land will be desolate. Um, verse 4, the earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languish, languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. How many people with all this debt right here, they're mortgaged, or, or excuse me, debtor slaves, and they're haughty, they're proud. Driving their vehicle down the road, you know, <laughs> you don't own that thing. You don't own the house that you live in. You don't own that cell phone that you're talking on. You don't own any of this stuff. You're a debtor. You're a slave. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Speaking to Israel here specifically, but hey, uh, very true for people today. People don't care about this word. They don't care about God. They're living on God's planet and they don't even want to give him glory. Pretty sick. Verse 6, Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Hmm. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. find that interesting. When we, used to, when we first moved to Maine, we used to like to get grape juice. There was this organic company or whatever from California, and we'd get this grape juice and things, and... and uh, it was great. It was really good stuff. And they stopped making it. And we did some searching into it. And they said, well, all the fires out here, you know, in California, this is years ago, all the fires destroyed their vineyards. There's no more vineyards out there that were, and so this company went out of business, it, you know, in terms of making grape juice. Pretty amazing. Little uh, prophecy there. Verse 8. Uh the mirth of tabrets ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song, strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down, every house is shut up, that no man may come in. Just unreal how, how amazing and accurate this Bible is. I am literally seeing this in our area. And you're, there's probably places in your area that you're seeing it. I mean, you, places shutting up. Stores, you know, fronts boarded up. Isn't that amazing? You know, the city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up. People are going to be leaving. They can't pay. Um... Verse 11, there is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. And the city is left desolation and the gate is smitten with destruction. <laughs> Just, wow, how accurate the word of God is. You know, there's a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. Walking through the store and this is all you see anymore. You know, grocery store earlier this morning and there was a little girl came in just a tiny little girl she's got this face mask on and uh, the moron muzzle as many people rightly call it and uh, the older man one of the older men he said oh hi honey and he said something nice to her and he just look at her and she just is she smiling I don't know I mean do you realize how unhealthy psychologically it is for people not to see each other smile you know they say about a smile is contagious. The old song, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. Apparently not anymore. <laughs> Just, you know, put your face mask on. Go on out and destroy yourself economically. I can't go to work because of a virus that 90 some 98% of people that get it get better from. And I can't go to work because of it. It's bad. What is it? It's God's judgment. You see... This whole thing right here is all wickedness, excluding number 12. This, this whole deal right here is just based on greed, the rich ruling over the poor. And that's, you know, a big part of this thing, too, that they're trying to do this big wealth transfer, rich people stealing, you know, things from poor people and, and whatever. Yeah. Just absolutely disgusting. So, kind of gave you an idea of what's the future here, but... 
I'm going to show you here a few points. The financial future of this world. And this isn't definitive or exhaustive or this is exactly what, you know, these are some basics. There's probably more we could put into this list. But number one, cash must be destroyed. All right. Uh, they got rid of every country. You look into the history of them. They get rid of the gold and they get rid of the silver and then they get rid of the copper coins. Um, you know, America, it was gold was wiped out in the 1930s. I guess it was. I can't think of the year right now. Forgive me for that. Um, but with the New Deal under Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And then um, uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, I think it was, got rid of the silver in 1965, if I remember correctly. And then in 1982 or 84, I didn't have this written down for the study, but they got rid of the copper penny. And then it's just the, they went to a zinc penny with a little bit of copper on top of it. And now they're saying, we really can't even afford to make these things anymore. There's been a lot of talk of getting rid of the penny. You know, it's just really bad. They get rid of the coins. Okay, coins are, are that are precious metal based. Um, they can be melted down and, you know, there's always value there. But, uh, and you know, you look at Mexico, they did the same thing. Canada did the same thing. All the different countries, they get rid of their gold, silver, and copper coins. But now they have to go after cash. And of course, there's been a lot of talk of cash being dirty because of the coronavirus and everything else. So they'll get rid of cash. Hyperinflation, stock market crash, bank bail-ins, where they steal money from your account. The bank will steal money for, for, from your account. And retirement accounts getting wiped out. That's the future. Okay, and there's a lot more too. You could say stagflation, deflation, you know, all the different stuff. I mean, we're seeing inflation all the time now. The price of something was four dollars, and then you go back to the store a week later and it's five dollars or something. You know, pretty bad. Number three, there's talk of UBI. You say, what's that? Universal basic income. In other words, communism. They will pay people, um, since you can't go to work. And, you know, we're trying to do a bailout type of thing here, a stimulus check and, and things. Um, eventually, they might just try to say, well, we'll give you a universal basic income, depending on what your job is or whatever you have in the future. We'll just give you an income and you get that whether you work hard or not. And you can't work and get a raise because you have your, you know, income that's there. And, you know, they might tweak it a little bit and whatever. But it's communism. There's, I mean, there's talk of a universal basic income. Talk about satanic. Talk about horrible. Um, God is not for that for any reason. Okay, universal basic income. It, it just destroys any kind of desire to work harder. So that's bad. And possible debt forgiveness. I have a question mark behind that. Universal basic income and debt forgiveness as part of rolling out the mark of the beast, as part of get vaccinated and you'll get a universal basic income and we'll forgive your debts that you have. And that would be very attractive to a lot of people. All right. Um, number four, there is not going to be any kind of return to gold and silver. All right. Sorry to tell you that. It's in the book of James. The, the rich men have, you know, they're weeping and howling because they've, they've stockpiled gold and silver for the last days and then it ends up being useless. All right. Again, um, gold has been confiscated multiple times in America throughout our history. Okay, so don't think, oh, well, you know, it, I, it'll be a safe haven and whatever else, and I'll always have it. Um, there was a guy, uh, Bernard von Nothaus, I think his name was, and he did these Norfed dollars. And, um, and he was basically uh, arrested and put in prison and whatever else. I mean, it was really ridiculous what they did to the guy. But his Norfed dollars are now illegal. You know, if you would, I, I guess if you would take them to a coin shop, you'd probably, they'd say, we can't buy this, or you're really supposed to turn that in, or whatever. I don't know, but it's just crazy. They could easily make gold and silver coins illegal and just say, you know, anybody that has them, well, you can't trade them in. We'll give you, you know, a week to trade them in. After that, they're illegal and can be confiscated, and if you try to hide them, they're not worth anything. Um, so, again, watch out for some of the financial guys because almost always they're going to gold and silver. Gold and silver, that's, that's the Bible system of money. Yes, it is, but we're coming into the Antichrist system where the Bible system of money is eliminated. 
be very careful about that. If you have a lot of money, um, you might want to think about uh, <clears throat> laying up treasures in heaven where thieves don't break in and, and they don't steal. Okay, um, Because any kind of financial stuff down here on the earth, um, laying up, you know, storing up and, and saving up and whatever else, retirement accounts, uh, any kind of stock market investments and whatever else, um, not a good idea. It's going to get wiped out in the future. So, number five, cashless digital mark of the beast. MOTB, mark of the beast, is what I have there. Um, that's what the Bible says is coming. And I believe it to be absolutely true. Anybody that denies that is just, what can I say, ignorant of, of the scriptures. Um, definitely lost and thinking that things are just going to get better when they're obviously not getting better. But number six, I could have probably put a lot more into this, but just trying to keep it basic here. Number six, the thousand year agrarian reign of G the Lord Jesus Christ is coming in the future. Okay, now I put that there for a reason. Right? It's very important to remember that. Um, when Jesus Christ sets up his kingdom here on this earth, after the time of Jacob's trouble, after the mark of the beast is instituted, and, it's, and most people get killed, um, over, I'd say probably 90, 95% of the world's population is going to get wiped out. Um, the Lord actually has to supernaturally shorten the days so that some flesh can be saved. I mean, it's going to be horrible, absolutely horrible. <clears throat> but when Jesus Christ sets up his kingdom, it's farming, living off the land, providing your own food. We'll get back to that. Okay, so um, now that we've covered that, let me just say this. Um, I never had rent or mortgage payments, ever. Um, we just stayed different places and things, and my wife and I saved up money, and... Uh, <clears throat> and we were able to eventually buy land, very cheap land, and buy a home, again, very cheap, um, with the money that we had saved up over the years. Uh, so um, I'll just, I want to just put a little green mark here beside the ones that we do not have. If we don't have that. I have had vehicle payments in the past, but I do not anymore. I don't drive brand new vehicles. I think you're crazy if you drive brand new vehicle. Cell phone, I had a track phone for a little bit of time because I thought I needed it and whatever. Didn't like the thing, it didn't work half the time. So we have no cell phone. Health insurance, no health insurance. You say, what? And I just want to address something here, okay? Because I've gotten this thing a couple times and it irritates me. Um, well, Brian, you, you, uh, you don't have health insurance because you're still young. Um, I guess they missed the gray hair here and the gray hair here and wherever else, uh, you know, up in here and things. Um, I'm still young, 45 years old, but I'm still young. And I don't know what it's like to have serious health conditions. Okay. Um, I've lived with a heart condition all, you know, I shouldn't say all my life, but since I was a boy, mitral valve prolapse is what it's called. All right. Uh, I've been in plenty of accidents over the years. I know very much what pain is. Um, had to have my thumb stitched here where I cut it really bad. I don't know if you can see that. I did that. Had that done without insurance. Sorry for the lighting in here. It's pretty bad, but right there you can kind of see it. Um, no insurance. Uh, had a logging accident the one time. Bruised my, bruised my pelvis, fell backwards to, down onto some rocks. Um, thought I, I thought, man, I probably have internal in injuries or something. Went, cost me nine hundred dollars for a stupid, you know, X-ray. Should have never gone. I was fine, but I didn't know. Um, so don't tell me I don't know anything about pain. There's issues I deal with, you know, health issues and things, and I, I deal with them nutritionally. We pray about them. Um, it's a constant fight to keep this old body of mine going. I've I've worn it out pretty badly and unfortunately destroyed my life for over 30 years with, with a lot of junk food, uh, fast food, sugar, um, poison pop, we like to call it soda pop. In other words, uh, so, so I just want to correct the, the thing out there. I've gotten that a few times. You don't know what pain is, Brian. When you get older, you'll have health insurance. Uh, no, um, I'm not going to have health insurance. I will take care of myself until the day comes that the Lord says, okay, time to go home. 
I trust the Lord and I will die in bed. All right? Uh, Lord willing, if I die in a vehicle accident or whatever else, I'm going to refuse to go to the hospital. I don't want anything to do with the hospitals, especially now with all this coronavirus stuff and putting people on ventilators and no thank you. I trust the Lord. So we have no health insurance. And some of you people that do have health insurance out there, um, you're spending a lot of money on your health insurance and you know it. Credit cards, personal loans. No thank you. I've had personal loans, vehicle type of stuff over the years, but uh, credit cards, never had a credit card. Uh, don't want to waste any kind of time on that. Um, now I have to correct that. We did, we did get a credit card at one point in time uh, just to see if we could build our credit up and it was just, you know, okay, this is ridiculous. Paid it off and destroyed it. Excuse me. I want to tell the truth here. Life insurance policies? No. Uh, again, Lord will take care of us. Not worried about that. Student loans? My wife had one when we first got married. We paid it off. All right? So we don't have that one. Alimony, child support? No. <laughs> uh, my wife and I were never married before, you know, we got married, so there was no divorced and whatever else. And, you know, some of you might not be able to avoid some of this stuff, getting rid of it because you messed up in your life and things. I get it. But I'm going to try to give you my best advice on how to try to get your debt, monthly expenses and debts down to where you can survive. Social clubs and church tithe. Well, I've done that plenty of times in the past, but not anymore. Okay? Not happening. Cable TV? No. Internet? Yes. We do have internet, so I will underline that. Okay? But this one here, no, I don't have cable TV. I don't want it cable TV. Um, I always get a really weird reaction when I'm dealing with people for internet service or whatever. And they say, would you like cable TV? And I say, no. <laughs> and uh, I don't watch television. And it's usually dead silence for a while. And then it's, oh, uh, oh okay. You know. <laughs> so... Um, auto insurance, I always get just the, you know, liability, whatever, that just covers the other guy or whatever. I, it doesn't cover my vehicle. If I wreck my vehicle, I, it's my loss. Uh, vehicle registration, can't really avoid that one. But again, I try to get it by with as little here as I can. Property income tax, again, I talked about that earlier. Um... <sighs> These here, obviously, are just a part of normal life, it, unfortunately. I'll talk about this a little bit more, but groceries, food, uh, well, can't put the th thing there. Um, but as far as uh, we don't pay for water here or septic or heat, um, we heat with wood. So uh, we do have to pay electric bill, but I think our electric bill for this place and, and is less than $50 a month. Um, so uh, vehicle maintenance, I try to do my own maintenance as much as I can. But um, is it possible to live debt free in terms of not owing anybody? Well, we already talked about that. Tax down there, um, you owe somebody tax. And as far as living completely without any kind of monthly expenditure except for tax, well, that's very difficult. Uh, I don't think anybody can say that they live completely without any need for um, buying some kind of food, be it salt or flour or whatever. Maybe you can barter with people or whatever else. But here's the point, okay? I am living proof that you can get by with eliminating most of this stuff right here. I mean, that's that's uh, 10 things, excluding the internet there, 10 things that you can cut out. And these are major payments. I mean, you look at mortgage and rent, vehicle payment, that's, that's expensive. Health insurance, also very expensive. So start, if you're in, in all kinds of debt, start eliminating as much of this list here as you can, all right? And when you can do that, and that's not going to happen very quickly. I mean, you could walk away from everything. I, I get it. But when you can do that, then you start to work on this list right here. Okay. Um, here, uh, ways that you can save money on groceries and food. Well, obviously, um, eat less extravagant foods. Uh, we eat a lot of potatoes. When we first moved to Maine, we didn't have a whole lot of money. 
and we were able to buy damaged potatoes. They called them penny-wise potatoes, and they were $5 for a 50-pound bag. It might, might have even been $3 for a 50-pound bag back then in 2014, but they're $5 now. We still eat them. Okay, they're they're damaged. They, the one end's cut up or something, or you know, bruised or whatever. You just cut that off, and there you go. It's pretty cheap eating. Um, we still do that. Uh, you know, hunting, fishing, are good ways to go out and get food. Um, wild edibles and things like that. Um, go to local farms. See if you can barter things and whatever. Of course, your own garden, your own food. Uh, raising chickens, whatever else you can do. Again, you say, well, what's this? where's this stuff coming from? Well, what's Jesus Christ setting up on the earth again? An agrarian system. A thousand-year reign where people are growing their own food. So we can't have that kingdom right now, obviously, because Jesus isn't here. Um, I'm not a millennial or post-millennial at all. Pre-millennial coming of Jesus and any rules and reigns um, on this earth, but if that's what the Lord's going to set up there for a thousand years or here for a thousand years, do as much of that as you can right now. You can save a lot of money. Um, we're going to get more and more into that as time goes by. Um, as far as utilities are concerned, try to get a, a, a wood burning stove if you can. Try to try to save money there as much as you can. Uh, rainwater catchment is a is a way that you can. Uh, save money on water and things. And, and I realize if you're in town or whatever else, it's going to be very difficult. That's why I've been telling people to go get off grid if you can, to get out into nature. Uh, you can do a lot more things for yourself and really lower these bills down. Okay. Uh, we recently bought bicycles, uh, just some inexpensive bicycles. Uh, we like to ride around on bike more. I used to do that a lot as a, as a boy and, and, uh, so I'd like to get back into biking, you know, riding places on a bicycle. Again, why? Save money on vehicle maintenance. Um, and again, I, you know, a, a thing I've done, the reason you, you know, you say, well, how can you get by without having a vehicle payment? Well, um, buy a vehicle, drive it for a while. When you're paying cash for a vehicle, you might put a little bit of money into it and whatever else, and then you sell that vehicle, and then you can use that money to buy the next vehicle or put it towards it I should say so you're not paying your you know if you're making vehicle payments leasing especially you're just throwing money out every single month and so when you go to trade it in you're not getting any kind of a whatever you know kind of a thing um, not getting any money into your pocket you're just going and trading it in um, if you're making payments a lot of times the vehicle will go bad before you're done paying it off especially in a northern environment where they put salt on the roads. So, you know, my point is here, there are ways to pay down uh, debts and to get out of them. And, you know, just a basic concept of if you don't have it, don't spend it. All right. And, you know, it's not some kind of a weird thing or whatever else that uh, new age people do or some kind of thing like that. You can live almost debt free. Uh, I can't say I'm totally debt free. Nobody can say that because we have to pay taxes down here. That's what the Bible says in Romans 13 verse 6. But um, as far as, you know, other things up in here, yeah, I, I get it. There's things that we need to do. There's things that we need to spend and, and whatever else. But if you are drowning in debt, with a lot of these things behind me here, uh, you need to do something. Um, because if you don't, you're going to be part of that thing of your life is going to be turned upside down before very long, right? So, just trying to see here if I've covered everything. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll just say this. I have this written here. I didn't say this yet, but this whole thing of credit and debt is based on covetousness and idolatry when you get right down to it. I can't afford this thing right now, but I can if I go to the bank. Well, that's wrong. And, you know, uh, this is not a salvation issue. If you have a mortgage rent payment, you're going to hell. I'm not preaching that at all. Um, 
this is a this is a thing that will you know it will affect your walk with the Lord because you're going to be very stressed out and it's going to be a really bad time for you um, and you're not really trusting him to provide um, but it's you know like I said you're there's saved people that are in messing around with this stuff over here I, I get it but uh, your prayer should be if you're saved Lord, help me to get away from a lot of this debt stuff as much as possible. Help me to grow my own food. Help me to deal with less things here and, and heat with something that I can get off my land or whatever else. Um, help me to start walking more. Help me to start riding a bicycle more or whatever. Um, I used to have a, a little motorcycle, um, a little Yamaha TW200 years ago. And um, the thing got right around 80 miles per gallon. Uh, you can do pretty good with something like that. And I would take it around and run errands with it and things, and I saved a lot of money and bought it on eBay for very cheap. It was had been wrecked and been sitting for, I think it was over 10 years it had been sitting, and I had a lot of work to do to get it up and going, but that's the way you make it. Um, yes, you can live debt-free. If you're a young person out there and you see all of the debt base system out in front of you and your parents are debtor slaves and everything else don't think that that's the only way of life it's not um, you can live a very good life and you know when you make money when you live on at a very low income or, or, or excuse me when you live at a very low outcome or, or out uh, what would just how do i don't even know how to say that um, your monthly expenditures are very low i'll say it that way there's not much coming out of your finances every month um, you can start to save up your money a lot better. That's why, why we were able to afford things that a lot of people just don't understand. Well, how can you buy this place in, in a house without any kind of mortgage? Well, because it was cheap, number one. And number two, we don't have a whole lot of debt over here. These 10 things, cable TV there again, these 10 things we don't even have. We don't even mess with that stuff. So that's a huge amount of money that we are not having to spend every month. So it's like having, you know, what money we make, which is not a whole lot, but what money we make, we're able to spend it on things that matter. So, and our, our goal as time goes by is to get better with the grocery and food thing and, and vehicle stuff and whatever else. So um, this is a major issue. Uh, because I think a lot of Christians are really going to suffer because of getting themselves into all kinds of debt. And it's going to be a very hard thing for a lot of people. So I just felt really a need to put this out and just kind of say this and explain you don't need to get into a lot of debt. And if you are in a lot of debt, you can get out of it. Um, I did have, like I said earlier, I did have some of this stuff in the past and I quit and I just said I don't need it anymore. I don't want it anymore. And find ways to save money. Find ways to, to cut corners and, and be frugal. So I'm going to put some links to some videos here at the end of this little study uh, to kind of talk more about the Millennial Kingdom, more about this down here, and uh, why I believe that debtors are going to take the mark of the beast. And um, so those will be at the end of the study. And uh, you can watch that. And if you're not saved, if you're not born again, you need to be saved. That's the most important thing. So rough times are ahead, brethren. Uh, times that will try men's souls. And if you're in, in debt, horribly in debt, and you say, I can't get out of it, well, you're, you're going to go down with the ship, unfortunately. I'm here to tell you that. If you're in town and you're living in all kinds of mortgage debt, rent debt, vehicle payments and everything else um, and you say I, I don't think I can get out of it in time okay well commit your soul to the Lord and say okay Lord whatever you want whatever ever you want to happen to me and that's going to be it so uh, please do pray for us as we go forward um, and uh, we'll pray for all of you out there we do pray for our viewers those that are saved and I guess we'll see you in future studies. Thank you for watching.